It is hard to get excited about Eastern developed MMORPGs. Normally they are pay to win, they aren't well optimized for the West. Let's be honest, the Western market becomes an afterthought for them. I just watched the new Throne and Liberty Director's preview and I'm pretty excited. We've been hearing about Project TL, Lineage 3, Lineage Eternal since 2011. The game has gone through a lot of changes over the years, morphing from an isometric game into a full-blown, multi-platform, action-combat MMORPG developed in Unreal Engine 4. Now, it is important to note that the game is available on PC and console, but there is no cross-play. Each group will be playing together by platform. Now, we could spend hours talking about the history of this game and its heritage and its legacy, but let's focus on the now. Eight months ago, NCSoft gave us our first real look at Throne in Liberty with an official trailer. That trailer has accumulated 9.2 million views. While some of that hype may be due to the fact the game was supposed to release in quarter four of 2022, that success shows there is a void in the MMORPG genre. Can Throne in Liberty fill that void? That remains to be seen, but two days ago we got this director's preview of Throne in Liberty, and it looks like it might be the solution to the current MMORPG drought. Let's take a look at some of the key features of the game and see if we can start being genuinely excited. In the video, the developers tell us that Throne refers to our players' battles and competitions. Liberty refers to the freedom to enjoy your own adventures in the game's dynamic world. And finally, and calls to mind a place of unity where the dividing walls of nationalities and generation gaps mean nothing. Now let's be honest, I know most of you don't care about vision or ideals behind a game, but I think given the game's now 12 year development, knowing that there is some meat behind those design decisions, more than just give us your money is a great thing. I think the idea of Throne in Liberty is a solid one, and it makes me feel like NCSoft recognizes the change in the MMORPG space from the late 90s to today. To me, and, and this is just my opinion, it sounds like they are going to blend a healthy amount of solo things you can do with group content you must do. They say Throne in Liberty was designed for everyone. Its slogan is one for all, all for one. To start with races and classes, the players will play as humans, but the world has elves and orcs. There is no holy trinity in Throne and Liberty. You choose two weapons, you upgrade them, you can change these choices at any time. You create your class for yourself. That is an amazing idea, and it, I'm excited to see how that plays out. The character creator sounds like it's going to be insane, as they are allowing you to create a character based on actual photos. Now if this is, or, is true or not, if it works or not, that remains to be seen, but I am stoked for it. The ability to make your character how you want it in creation, how you want to be one with your character, that is so important on so many levels. But this freedom of class that they talk about, that leads directly into combat, which at face value seems like it's going to be a very fast paced action combat game using those two weapons to combine combos to exploit and even create weaknesses. Talking about a combat system before we see the nuts and bolts of it is really kind of pointless, but I can say this. Given the fluidity that other NCSoft games have in their combat design, Throne and Liberty may be the game to look out for if you're an action combat fan. Now with Throne and Liberty being infused with the spirit of lineage, we have to talk about PvP rules. And for people who remember with dread the rules of Lineage 2, don't worry, Throne and Liberty has more forgiving PvP rule sets. Most of Throne and Liberty's fields are safe zones. However, certain events will allow combat to occur, and world bosses is one of them. I think this is a great idea and something all MMORPGs need to look at. World bosses should always be open PvP zones, so 
guilds, groups, alliances can contest world boss completion. Now, some regional events are created so all players can participate, and they did say for approximately 20 minutes. Now, I can't tell you if this is good or not. I'll have to wait until we get more involved with actual playthroughs. There are also guild wars. In fields, these are basically zones, there are two objectives, the Blessing Stone and the Dimensional Stone. Together, they are the Possession Stones. If your guild controls them, you get guild benefits and raw materials. What I love about this preview is that in order to get through the stones, you're going to need to fight bloody battles. I love it, and I love when the developer says that. That's what we need more of in PvP-centric events, blood and carnage. The combat director said creating coherent strategies is a must. We can only hope that this is the real deal, because we don't want another Zerg smash smash run away with the flag game. We want a game that has all levels of strategy and tactics being blended and being important. For people who like PvE content and your big one is dungeons, in the preview they talked a lot about the design of their open world dungeons. They have an idea of keeping the dungeons open world in a single zone so players can meet others, construct communities, and discover who they are as groups and players. NCSoft believes this is the essence of an MMORPG, and given that they are behind Lineage 1 and 2, Blade and Soul, Aeon, and several other MMORPGs, they have decades of experience of what an MMORPG is. Now remember, the dungeons may be open world, but as you heard, PvP is turned off or has some sort of opt-in feature unless the zone has gone into a PvP event. So if you're worried that open world dungeons are going to lead to grief fests or ganking fests, don't. NCSoft has a solid plan for how to make sure everybody can do the content that they want to do. They also talked about weather and environment. The weather and environment are going to have visual effects, but they are also going to force players to adapt to the environment. Events can spring up from the development of the environment. Now, obviously, because all we have is the director's preview and they didn't choose to go into more detail, I don't have more detail to give you, but I do think this is an amazing idea of players having to adapt to the world they're in, and that's going to change their strategy, which in turn is going to change their tactics. This last piece is just my opinion on what NCSoft needs to avoid to be successful. We're going to talk pay to win, lack of integrity, and overpromising and underdelivering. On the pay to win note, during a previous Q&A session, NCSoft executives promised Throne and Liberty would avoid excessive pay to win elements. There were some major hints of some sort of battle pass system, but the game itself is designed in a way that avoids pay to win. That's really how games should be. But this seems like a little too much marketing speak for me, just a little bit too much buzzword bingo. Pay to win is pay to win. It's a yes or no question. Do you have it or not? Excessive pay to win starts to become a very subjective statement and is a very personal decision. Some gamers are okay with a little bit of pay to win. Some are okay with rampant pay to win. And there are those that find any pay to win to be an immediate turnoff. I think if NCSoft really wants to make Throne and Liberty successful, they need to tell us what the pay to win looks like right up front. They need to tell us what the battle pass looks like right up front. They will suffer the brunt of anger being the first MMORPG to launch in a long time if it's littered with pay to win. The other problem with many MMORPGs in development lately are they are promising everything, but they can't deliver. I've spent the last few days looking over everything that NCSoft has put out, and I can't find any major areas of concerns. And you guys know that's what I do. I dig and I dig and I dig until I find a string to pull on. And for this section of the video, it's really a bust. I don't have a overpromise and underdelivering concern. Other than that little bit of pay to win concern, and some of that may be a language barrier thing between English and Korean, I'm gonna tell you right now for Throne and Liberty, I'm sitting at a hype nine, a confidence eight and a half. 
what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sit down, I'm going to look at the schedule, and I'm going to figure out how I can put more Throne in Liberty in the video production schedule. There's not a lot. I don't want to over milk the cow. Uh, I will see you guys in 2023 as soon as we have more uh, Throne in Liberty news. I may do some streams on it. I may do some shorter stream segments on it, but I definitely see myself playing Project TNL in half one. 2023 so let me know are you interested are you going to be playing are you it's immediate turn off because it's an eastern game let me know what you're thinking and let's have a discussion about it i'll see you guys next time